Hey there, my name is Adam Keller and I'm a developer advocate on the container services team here at AWS. Today we're going to walk through the 1.8 release of the AWS Copilot CLI and we're going to talk about the latest features that were shipped with this release. We're going to do this all while seeing an application that I deployed. Let's get started by digging into the features. So as you can see here, this is the uh, documentation page. Highly recommend if you want to dive into any of the features um, of Copilot to start with the documentation as it's very helpful. So the first feature that shipped with the 1.8 release uh, is the HTTP alias feature. This feature enables Copilot users to add a friendly domain name to their load balance web services. So previous to this feature release, when you deployed a load balance web service, it was the, the, the A record created in Route 53, the domain name was your uh, uh, service name dot uh, environment dot application name dot domain. Customers requested the ability to add their own custom domain name um, to their load balance web services. So as you can see on my screen here, I actually have uh, a new field in my HTTP directive, which is called alias. And here's where I can set my domain name, um, as well as, you know, again, it's just custom based off of the domain that I registered when I initialized my um, Copilot application. And by the way, if you're using a previous version of Copilot CLI, you're gonna have to walk through the Copilot app upgrade step. So that is, again, that's in the documentation. Please see that for more information. So as you can see here, I set my alias and that's it. Behind the scenes, Copilot on my, my deployment is going to create that A record in Route 53. It's also going to provision a certificate, an Amazon Certificate Manager. So I have HTTPS um, secure access to my web application. So you can see here on the next page, here's my application I deployed earlier. It's neoncat, neoncat.demo.adamjkeller.com. So it was that simple to create that alias. For more information, again, check out the documentation. The next thing I wanted to show off was the update and enhancement to the Copilot service status command. So we've now added a tasks summary section that displays stats on deployments, target group health, and more. So we've also just beautified it a little bit. So you can see this is what the new uh, experience looks like when running a Copilot service status. Ultimately, the idea here is for the, what we like to call those day two operations when you're, you need insight into your production apps, your test apps, um, Copilot service status should be able to give you that insight so you can derive what action needs to be taken based off of whatever it is that you're seeing in your applications. The last two features uh, to bring up, um, one around container dependencies. So it's very common in containerized workloads to use what are called sidecars. A sidecar is just another container that runs alongside your main application container. Um, and some common use cases for this are logging sidecars where you wanna ship your, your application logs to a third-party logging solution or your own custom logging solution like Elasticsearch with Kibana or Splunk and, and so on. Another use case would be for metrics and monitoring. If you're using a, a like a third-party like Datadog or, or New Relic, um, you can, typically you would deploy a sidecar to just have those metrics shipped directly to your the, the vendor of your choice. So now what you can do is you can set a dependency order uh, in your uh, manifest file. And the idea here being, if you need to ensure that your Datadog container or your logging container comes up first prior to your application uh, container, uh, you can have that ordering set in your manifest. And the last thing to mention is, now uh, with this release of Copilot 1.8, you have the ability to import a completely private VPC. So there are some use cases where customers are looking to have their workloads running in a completely air-gapped private VPC with no internet access. So now with the Copilot CLI, um, you would still have to create the VPC outside of the Copilot for this particular use case, 
Um, but once you have that VPC created, you simply can import it uh, when deploying your environments. So that's it for this release. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to the Copilot team. Um, there's a, a Gitter page. You can reach out to the Copilot team on the GitHub repo, uh, submit an issue if you have questions or concerns or there's a feature you're looking for. And you can also reach out to me on Twitter if you have any questions at well, as well at Real Adam J. Keller. Thanks so much for taking the time and happy deploying.